Hey guys, my name is Tyler Williams, and today I am going to get into the story about the Vietnam War. And like most of us, uh, the younger age, we are pr probably not around for the Vietnam War. Uh, some of you may have been, but for me, I was not. Uh, I only heard, heard stories of the sorrow, the terror, and the isolation that came about after the war. Uh, so what I decided to do my book review on was Boots on the Ground, America's War in Vietnam. Uh, you can see it right here. The author is Elizabeth Partridge, if you guys can read that. Sorry. There you are. Uh, and this book, Boots on the Ground, by Elizabeth Partridge, is a multi-award winning book. Uh, it won in the uh, national, it was a runner-up in the National Book Awards, it was also a Prince nominee, and it was a winner for non uh, excellence in nonfiction for older readers or young adults. Uh, so, Elizabeth Partridge, she typically writes about certain individuals, uh, such as John Lennon, Dorothy Lange, and an artist, Woody Guthrie. However, in this book, Boots on the Ground, she takes the stories of eight different individuals, and a little more, uh, who were somehow involved in this Vietnam War. Uh, some of these people included Martin Luther King Jr., Lyndon B. Johnson, and a couple soldiers by the name of Henry Allen, Gilbert De La O, Mike Curran, David Oshiro, and Tom Kelly. But not only does she get some interviews from soldiers, she also gets interviews from a protest singer by the name of Joe McDonald and a refugee from the war uh, by the name of Ho Thi Nguyen. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that name, but uh, he was a refugee during the time of the war. Uh, so. The true stories, honestly, to get right into it, bring you into the life of each individual. Some of these stories unbelievably horrific and others very less stressful. But no matter the weight of the story, you as the reader can feel the emotion of what these individuals had to go through. Uh, now, getting into the theme of the book, it is centered around, obviously, the main span of the war from the early, uh, the Vietnam War, from the early 60s to about the uh, mid 70s. And it shows a country, the U.S., divided by people who thought this war was absolutely necessary for the anti-communist uh, movement that was happening in America against the people who thought this war was appalling because they, hadn't, they thought that the United States had nothing to do with communism and we didn't need to have anything to do with it. Uh, so going on from there, we have fights from the urge to serve one's country from these soldiers to protest to bring American men back home. Uh, these ideas flow through the book really well from real accounts from uh, President Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, you know, he was wanting to send more troops. And on the opposite, you had MLK, who was fighting for the unfair treatment of poor white and black men being drafted to the fight, or to a fight that they, they really didn't want to be. Uh, not that he was fighting for it, but he was fighting against that. Uh, he was, he was hoping that they would come home because this war, he thought, was for no reason. Uh, so the story begin, begins with a quick overview of Elizabeth being a young girl, growing up in the age of a Vietnam War where s she was seeing friends and family and relatives uh, being called to action. And it, it directly dives into a account from a military advisor by the name of Mai Curran and his accounts of betrayal and fear while being in, in uh, Vietnam. And it is very, a very you know, brunt kickoff to the story, but it brings you right in. It's very exciting. It's very uh, truthful, I will say. Uh, he, he talks about being ambushed by, by Viet Cong, these fearless Viet Cong units that only had pride to for, for, or fight for and only had their country to fight for, whereas opposed to the American soldiers, they didn't really know what they were fighting for. And uh, for them, that could have been very scary. So, you know, not being from the era and only hearing stories gave me a little bit of insight prior to reading this book, but the reality of what happened in Vietnam, I had no idea. I, I could not have anticipated. Uh, hearing the true but disturbing sights from the medic Tom Kelly, uh, what he saw and the harrowing surgeries that nurse Lily Lee Adams had to perform were just not were not just inspiring, but also kind of unsettling. Uh, they they really get you into the mind of the person there, the, the individual fighting in the war or being on the back lines of the war, helping in the hospital. 
uh, it really gives you an insight onto how their lives uh, were during this time. So the book is actually structured in a chronological order from when events occurred to when the con uh, conflict finally ended. And although the story begins with what seems would be an um, easy American victory because of the out or outnumbered uh, Viet Cong, the outgunned Viet Cong, and the outtrained Viet Cong, it quickly turned because U.S. soldiers were not equipped to fight in these kind of conditions. The jungle the humidity, the constant rain, um, the, the bugs, the insects, the animals, they weren't used to. And since they were on the Viet Cong territory, these Viet Cong units would set up ambushes. They would set up bombs, traps, things that mentally terrified these uh, U.S. soldiers. And it, it's incredible to, to hear the real accounts from these men and women that you could just, you know, you could sense the fear in them. You could sense the that emotion coming out and not knowing what to do in, in such an unfamiliar place. Uh, so this book does a really excellent job on switching, not you know, not solely onto the heartache and the the sorrow times and the and the terrifying times, but it also switches back to some some uh, events going on back in America while the the war was going on, such as fights and protests between the presidents and protesters in the streets. Uh, MLK being a very outspoken gentleman uh, of the crowd to uh, a military, um, the war designer, excuse me, the memorial designer for the sculpture in DC for the Vietnam veterans who had passed away, unfortunately. Uh, she had gotten backlash from a lot of the US uh, citizens, not because they didn't want to remember the fallen or the deceased, However, they thought those people who had lost their lives did not deserve to lose their lives. And that's hard because her, she wanted to do something so good for her American vets, but was being heavily pushed back towards. Uh, so, you know, towards the end of the story, getting to see all the aftermath of the war on the American size, or society, troops were coming home to no sort of welcome. Uh, or excitement and they were left to deal with the memory of taking lives or losing people that were their only companions in the jungle. Uh, troop ca troops came home to protests against the war and were alienated from any part of normal society for doing what was asked of them in the first place, which was, a, was really hard for a lot of them. Uh, and not only were the troops you know, pushed aside, but like I said, that memorial designer Maya Lin was given a ton of backlash for erecting that v uh, Vietnam Memorial site in Washington, D.C. So moving on from that, the reason why I uh, really enjoyed this book was because it had no political view. It had no political side that it took to, which I really enjoy for a book because it allows the reader to, to create their own sort of um, idea of the situation or just opinion of the situation. And I don't want, I don't like reading a book where the reader or the, the author forces an idea down you or down your throat. You know, I prefer to create my own opinions or uh, idea on the situation that is happening. So that's why I really took to this book because I had read some reviews and people were saying that it was a good description of a nonfiction, pure war story from the mouth of actual veterans. Uh, and that's why I really took to this book. So this book was only actually published last year, um, and it's already, like I said in the beginning of the video, gotten multiple awards, like the Golden Kite for uh, award for nonfiction. Uh, it is it was a Prince Honor recipient and a finalist in the National Book Awards. So this book carries a lot of wealth and uh, prestige behind it. So if you guys ever find yourself in the library. Or uh, you know, surfing surfing Amazon or something, and you're looking for a good book. And especially if you like war stories, I really suggest you guys look into this book because it is a fantastic read. Uh, very short, only about 190 pages, but every page is thrilling, and every page will want you to or will make you want to or, uh, turn to the next one. So, guys, again, this was Boots on the Ground: America's War in Vietnam by Elizabeth Partridge. And my name was Tyler Williams. Thank you guys for listening in. Have a good day.